Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo Lamas and in this video we'll talk about acute inflammation. Acute inflammation is characterized by vascular dilation and increased blood flow, which can lead to erythema and worm. In addition, there is extra vasation of plasma fluid and extra vascular deposition of plasma proteins, leading to edema. There is also leukocyte immigration and accumulation of cells and inflammatory mediators at the site of injury, causing pain, fever, and tissue damage. Pain is due to increased pressure caused by accumulation of interstitial fluid, as well as due to sensitization of sensory nerve endings by two key mediators, pedikinin and prostaglandin E2, or PGE2, that will be covered throughout the video. In addition, as mentioned before, no, yeah. In addition, fever is mediated by pathogens, such as bacterial LPS, which induce macrophages to secrete cytokines, such as interleukin-1, 6, and TNF-alpha. Together, these cytokines increase cyclooxygenase activity in the perivascular cells of the hypothalamus, causing release of PGE2. Please remember, that the cytokines mediate in fever we discussed in previous videos. Acute inflammation is characterized by cell-derived and plasma-derived mediators. First, we are going to talk about the cell-derived mediators, which include basoactive amines, such as histamine, which is stored performed in mast cells, basophils, and platelets. Histamine binds to H1 receptors on endothelial cells, and causes vasodilation of arterioles and increased permeability of venules. Another vasoactive amine is serotonin, which is similar to histamine but released mainly by platelets. Among other roles, serotonin is released by platelets when they bind to a clot and functions as a vasoconstrictor to help regulate homeostasis and blood clotting. Arachidonic acid metabolites include prostaglandins and leukotrins. They are derived from arachidonic acid, or acosanoids, which is a component of the cell membrane phospholipid, derived from the essential fatty acid, linoleic acid. These metabolites mediate the inflammatory response by binding to G-protein copper receptors, or GPCRs, on different cells. Arachidonic acid is generated by cleaving membrane phospholipids via phospholipids. Cyclooxygenase can then cleave arachidonic acid to generate the first prostaglandin, prostaglandin G2. Different synthetized enzymes can generate other prostaglandins, such as H2. In turn, prostaglandin H2 can generate prostacyclines which induce vasodilation and inhibit platelet aggregation. In addition, prostaglandin H2 can lead to degeneration of prostaglandin D2 and prostaglandin E2, both of which promote vasodilation and vascular permeability. Finally, prostaglandin H2 can also generate thromboxane A2, which induces vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation. Arachidonic acid can also be cleaved by 5 lipooxygenase to generate 5 hydroxyperoxy acosate trinoic acid. This can lead to the formation of hydroxy acosate trinoic acid, which causes chemotaxis of white blood cells. Also, it can lead to formation of leukotrin A4, which in turn can create leukotrin B4 which also causes chemotaxis of white blood cells. Leukotrin A4 can also be converted to leukotrin C4, D4, and E4, all of which induce vasoconstriction, bronchoconstriction, and vascular permeability. Finally, 12 lipooxygenase can generate lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4 both of which inhibit adhesion and chemotaxis of polymorphonucleoleukocytes. 
A third salt derived mediator of acute inflammation is platelet activating factor, or PATH. Low levels of PATH can cause increased vascular permeability, facial dilation, and indirectly affect leukocyte adhesion, chemotaxis, the granulation of mast cells and basophils, and the synthesis of prostaglandins, leukotrins, and other mediators of inflammation. On the other hand, high levels of PATH can cause vasoconstriction and bronchoconstriction. Finally, the main effect of PATH is to cause platelet aggregation. Yeah. Reactive oxygen species is the fourth component of the cell derived mediators. They include superoxide anion, hydrogen peroxide, and hydroxy radical. Superoxide anion combines with nitric oxide to form a microbicide. Reactive oxygen species, or ROS, are released from leukocytes after exposure to an injury. They amplify the inflammatory response by increasing expression of cytokines, chemotactic factors, and leukocyte adhesion molecules. In addition, they can cause damage to normal host tissues. Nitric oxide is another cell derived mediator that is released by endothelial cells, neuronal cells, or macrophages. It is synthesized from L-arginine by nitric oxide synthase. Nitric oxide has pro-inflammatory properties, which include smooth muscle relaxation that in turn can lead to vasodilation and microbicidal activity. However, nitric oxide also has anti-inflammatory properties, such as inhibition of platelet aggregation and adhesion, inhibition of mast cell activity, and inhibition of leukocyte recruitment. Cytokines are also cellular mediators of acute inflammation. These are proteins produced primarily by macrophages that modulate the functions of other cells. Some examples include tumor necrosis alpha, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6. Chemokines are also cell derived mediators of inflammation. They are a family of small molecules that act mainly as chemoattractants for different types of leukocytes. An example that was previously discussed is interleukin-8, or CXCL8, which is a chemoattractant for neutrophils. Microbes, toxins, pathogen recognition by toller receptors, and cytokines lead to the activation of macrophages, which release large amounts of TNF-alpha and interleukin-1. TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 can induce a local response, characterized by the increased expression of adhesion molecules on leukocytes' vascular endothelium, as described in previous videos. For the production of interleukin-1, an increased production of procoagulants and inhibition of anticoagulants. In addition, the local response is In addition, this local response is characterized by activation of white blood cells and cytokine production. All of these factors participate in inflammation. The local response can also induce fibroblast proliferation, which in turn causes collagen synthesis and secretion, all of which lead to repair of tissue. TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, and C5A can lead to systemic effects. These systemic effects are characterized by fever, leukocytosis, an increase in the release of acute phase reactants such as cis-reactive protein, serum amyloid, and fibrinogen, sleepiness, and decreased appetite, all of which contribute to systemic inflammation. The last cell derived mediators are neuropeptides. They are secreted by sensory nerves and some leukocytes. Some examples include substance P, which transmits pain signals, regulates pressure, stimulates endocrine cells, and increases vascular permeability. A second example is neurokinin A, which is a neurotransmitter of peripheral tissues that is also released by nerve endings in response to certain stimuli. Neurokinin A is involved in nociceptive or pain stimuli and inflammatory responses. A third neuropeptide is calcitonin-related gene product, which links the sensing of painful stimuli to the development of host responses. Plasma protein derived mediators of acute inflammation include the complement system, the kinin system, 
the coagulation system and the fibrinolytic system. Factor 12, or Hegemann factor, is the initiating factor in the generation of these plasma protein-derived mediators. Factor 12 interacts with high molecular weight kininogen to generate Factor 12A. Factor 12A will initiate the kinin cascade by activating pre-calicrane into calicrane. In turn, calicrane can convert high molecular weight kininogen into bradykinin. Bradykinin is a substance that increases vascular permeability and causes pain. Secondly, calicrane can cleave C5 to generate C5A, a potent pro-inflammatory molecule. Finally, calicrane can activate plasminogen to plasmino. Can you just? Finally, calicrane. Finally, calicrane can induce conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, which are part of the fibrinolytic system. Plasmin can cleave C3 to generate. C3A, another potent pro-inflammatory molecule. In addition, plasmin can degrade fibrin clots. Factor 12A is involved in the production of thrombin from clotting factors. Thrombin can directly activate platelets via proteolytic cleavage of protease activated receptor and induce fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrinogen is produced in the liver and promotes endothelial repair and causes platelet aggregation. Fibrin forms a framework that entraps platelets and together lead to the formation of a blood clot. After watching this video, please rate it by using the thumb up or down option below. Thank you.